Okay, so uh, so thank you uh, uh, all for joining this call. So uh, let me first introduce myself. So I'm Lakshmi Kant Upadhyay. I'm currently working as a senior a NoSQL database engineer uh, and Cassandra subject matter expert at MX. Uh, so I have overall 10 years of experience in software industry. Uh, however, I have been working on Cassandra for last six years now. Uh, well, uh, in this session, uh, I'm going to talk about Sandra upgrade, uh, uh, different upgrade strategies, uh, best practices, uh, all the do's and don'ts, uh, and uh, about rollback. So during this presentation, I'll be giving uh, some real examples of issues uh, faced by me uh, during upgrades. Um, uh, this session is important for new Cassandra users who is planning to do a uh, update and it will have some useful uh, information uh, for experienced administrator and users as well. And uh, feel free to post uh, your question on the chat box. Uh, I'll, I'll try to answer them at the end of this session. Uh, one disclaimer here is that uh, all the information uh, shared here is based on my own uh, experience with Cassandra in various organizations, and it uh, do not express the view of my current employer. So now let's start. Okay, I had used some Jiffy, but I don't think it will work in this PPT uh, in this P PDF mode. But anyway, so the first thing is that. Um, why even we need to upgrade so uh, there can be a couple of good reasons uh, for upgrade so if your current version has reached end of life uh, that means it is no more supported by the community and patches or bug uh, bug fixes will not be available on this version uh, for example cassandra 2.0 and uh, soon uh, cassandra 2.1 will be reaching uh, end of life uh, after the release of 4.0 so, so both fixes and improvement changes are done only uh, in the latest uh, uh, releases. So now, even even if your uh, uh, Cassandra has reached uh, end of life, you might not bother upgrading your cluster because uh, your cluster may be running absolutely uh, fine uh, without any issue. But one thing uh, uh, we should keep in mind that uh, that the longer the gap, more complex the upgrade process is. So, so this is one of the reasons that it is recommended uh, to be on late bug fix releases, and this will help to keep our future upgrade process smooth. Now, new feature uh, may also attract you to do upgrade. Uh, for example, uh, if you want five times of faster scaling operation, or you want to use virtual table, or you want to use audit logging for security reasons, then Cassandra 4.0 has all these cool features and you may want to upgrade uh, to 4.0 in future. Now, <clears throat> just for the information here that uh, if you just want audit logging, uh, then uh, Ericsson's EC audit uh, plugin is available uh, on GitHub for free. Uh, so if you want to use it for your older Cassandra version, you can use that as well. Now, the other reason you may want to upgrade your cluster that if your cluster uh, Cassandra version has some known bug or vulnerabilities. Uh, so, for example, uh, we have recently uh, heard uh, uh, that this TB2020, uh, this 13946 RMI rewind uh, vulnerabilities, uh, which has been fixed in the latest patch, but, uh, uh, but you are exposed to this only if your JMX port is accessible outside the world. Uh, if not, then uh, you don't have to uh, worry about it. So mostly, uh, mostly these are the reasons uh, when the team thinks to upgrade their Cassandra cluster. Now, I remember uh, during uh, our school days, uh, we used to get uh, homework assignments. Uh, so, so to have a smooth upgrade in your production, so I am suggesting five homeworks which we should do. So the first homework is uh, open Jira ticket analysis. 
so let's say you want to upgrade to version x so give a look uh, uh, on the open jira and make sure uh, no existing feature which your application is using is broken now the the second uh, homework is uh, find out the answer of these important questions so the first uh, question is that is there any changes required uh, at your client application level and uh, often i mean i have noticed that uh, the db operations teams miss this part uh, because of lack of collaboration close collaboration with the the application teams so this is an important item in your update checklist uh, especially if you are uh, planning to do a major version upgrade uh, now, uh, uh, for for example, uh, if you are upgrading from 2.1 to 3.x and you're, you are using uh, the Java driver version as 2.1, well, uh, this this is gonna fail when you start upgrading. So it makes sense to update your driver version first. Now, now if you are uh, making uh, the driver version uh, update, uh, your application team might not just have to bump the version uh, it may require some more work in case there is some api level changes uh, at the uh, higher version uh, driver now um, one more uh, point uh, like i would like to add here that in some of the application uh, i have seen that uh, uh, the, the the application directly access the uh, cassandra system internal tables I mean, uh, for for example, to get the list of existing key spaces in older Cassandra version, uh, they will do select uh, uh, all from uh, system dot schema key spaces table. Now, now this line of code will break when you try to upgrade to uh, uh, to you Cassandra to the higher version because now the schema information is kept in system underscore schema key spaces. So, so I would suggest that uh, whenever possible, I mean, let the driver access the system uh, tables. Uh, any they anyway do. Uh, the application uh, should use a driver's API to get such information and uh, avoid such uh, issue. Now, the next uh, question which uh, uh, to ask is that: uh, Do you need uh, to run upgrade such table post upgrade? Uh, now. Uh, so the basic uh, thing is that uh, we divide uh, Cassandra upgrade in two parts. So one is the binary upgrade, and the second is uh, upgrading the older SS tables to the newer version using no tool upgrade SS table command. So uh, a short answer to this question is that yes, we do need to run uh, upgrade SS table post upgrade after every upgrade. But in some minor version upgrade, uh, you may not. Uh, need to run it. Uh, however, whenever in doubt, uh, run the update SS table since it will be a uh, no op if SS tables need not to be uh, rewritten. And it also makes sense that uh, uh, to keep the same steps in your upgrade automation playlist to avoid any issue due to incompatibility. Now, the next question which uh, is to ask uh, is that like how uh, you are going to handle unsupported native protocol uh, version so what is what is native native protocol so the native protocol is the protocol through which uh, your driver and cassandra talk to each other over uh, tcp so uh, by default the protocol version is negotiated between driver and cassandra when the first connection is uh, established now this could lead to the situation shown in the image here. So let's say uh, you are upgrading uh, from uh, 2.0 to, to, to uh, 2.1. And the first contact point at the application side uh, is 2.1 host. Uh, so the driver will negotiate uh, with protocol version B3. However, it won't be able to connect to the rest of the 2.0 node uh, with same uh, V3 version and it will fail due to unsupported uh, protocol version exception and your driver will ignore all these uh, these uh, the rest of the node which are on 2.0 so so the so what's the issue here so the issue um, here is that in this particular case there is a chance that your application um, 
uh, can go temporarily unavailable uh, if this node, the 2.1 node, uh, goes down. And even if this node uh, doesn't go down, so all the requests from client uh, is uh, landing to this 2.1 uh, node, and this node uh, becomes a uh, uh, bottleneck temporarily. Uh, you know, until uh, some of some more nodes are upgraded. Um, one more issue uh, which recently observed, and it is specific to uh, mixed version cluster of 2.1 and 3.x, the and if you are using a uh, pagination, uh, that your query will fail, uh, the paginated query will fail due to incompatible paging state between different protocol version. And for details, you can you can check this Cassandra uh, 15193 uh, ticket. So now what's the uh, resolution here? So to, to resolve these two, uh, you, you have uh, this, these uh, following options. So the first is while upgrading at the client side, you can set a lower protocol version if it is configurable so that it does not negotiate uh, with the higher version here. Uh, so in this particular case, you have to set uh, to V2 uh, uh, for the mixed version cluster between 2.0 and 2.1. And if it is not configurable at the, uh, I mean, uh, at, at the application level, then make sure that the client side contact point list does not have upgraded node until a number of nodes uh, has been upgraded. Uh, or the third point uh, is that like uh, if you are upgrading to 3.11.5 or 3.0.19 or higher version, then you can set this native transport max negotiable protocol version in Cassandra YAML at, at server side, at, at Cassandra side. And this, this parameter in uh, this configuration parameter was introduced to resolve this ticket, uh, 15193 only. Now, well, uh, I mean, it might sound uh, a little complicated, but the good news is that in the latest driver, for example, Java 4.x, uh, it supports automatic negotiation uh, even in the uh, mixed version cluster. So you don't need to force the lower native protocol version manually anymore uh, during the upgrade. So that's the that's a very uh, very good uh, thing. Uh, um, now. The the next question to ask, and uh, uh, this is one of the most frequently uh, frequently asked question about Cassandra upgrade. Like uh, that, uh, do I need uh, to take an intermediate upgrade? So if you just Google this Cassandra upgrade, and you will see lots of similar question asked on Stack Overflow. Now here I would like to uh, uh, like to answer uh, uh, some of them uh, very quickly. So let's say uh, uh, let's say you want to uh, upgrade to 3.x so if your current version is 2.1.19 or 2.2.2 um, you don't need to worry about any intermediate upgrade uh, i mean uh, while while upgrading to 3, uh, 3.x if you have any older version then uh, you need an intermediate uh, upgrade and now let's say you want to upgrade to 4.0 so you cannot upgrade to uh, uh, cannot upgrade uh, from 2.x version to 4.0 directly. I mean, you have to upgrade to 3.x first. And upgrade from 3.x are supported since 3.0.13 or 3.11.0. However, uh, now if you are expected to use uh, uh, tracing in the mixed version cluster, then you should be at least on 2.0.20. Or 2020 or 3116. Uh, uh, it is because uh, uh, some additional column uh, has been added in system traces event and uh, session tables, and it will cause a failure uh, during upgrade if you are at the uh, uh, if you are using some lower version. Uh, and on the in the mixed version cluster in t.x side, uh, this will also lead to broken internode uh, connection. So for details, uh, you. Uh, you can check a one Cassandra 15385 uh, ticket. So it makes sense to be on at least on this version before uh, upgrading to 4.0. Now the, so okay, so um, to cut cut it short, I mean, uh, if you want an answer, uh, if you want 
the answer to the question that whether I can directly upgrade from version X to version Y or not, you know, just refer to news.txt. And that is what the next homework is. Like, uh, so all the upgrade path will be well explained here. And not just the upgrade path, but all the important upgrade instruction uh, uh, is present in news.txe. So, so reading at least the upgrading uh, section of news.txt is a must do homework. Um, now, the next uh, homework is is very uh, is very obvious that automate is automate uh, uh, the entire thing so in ideal scenario uh, the uh, the upgrade uh, the upgrade to entire cluster should be with one click on a button so i mean uh, uh, now which tool uh, you should use uh, so i would say uh, like uh, go ahead with uh, with the tools or combination of tool uh, which your team is uh, comfortable with uh, or which is used in your organization it could be open source or proprietary and if you are exploring uh, new tools for upgrade, so take a look at uh, C star. Uh, in fact, there is already a session scheduled uh, um, uh, uh, which will discuss upgrading Cassandra using C star. So it's uh, a worth watch. So you can you can check that. Uh, now, the the last uh, but. The last homework, um, but not the least, is that before you go to production, test it in your staging area and test it well. Well, so perform all the functional and non-functional testing, and uh, during uh, during your testing, um, uh, monitor uh, Cassandra uh, matrices, and these are some of the important metrics which you should monitor, like 95 to 9, uh, and 99 percent latencies. Heap, uh, heap usage, GC process, check if there is uh, any exceptions or not, uh, total uh, block task or uh, drop messages. Now, apart from application testing, uh, uh, Cassandra uh, operation activities, uh, testing Cassandra operational activities like repair, scale up is also very important. So let me give you an example. So in one of my previous organizations, so we were planning to upgrade uh, from 2.1 to 3.11. And uh, as for the recommendation, we decided to go to the latest patch, which was uh, 3.11.2 at that time. Um, so while application team uh, application testing uh, showed a very good result, so our reports, uh, uh, our reports API became faster than the older version. However, a, a, one of our tests failed where the counter uh, data type was not, get it, uh, not getting implemented in the mixed version cluster. And uh, this is the Jira ticket uh, for, uh, for the reference 14958. So, uh, so that was the one bug we found during our application testing. However, um, the after the upgrade, uh, while testing the uh, Cassandra operational activity, so during our repair, the repair coordinated uh, coordinator started failing due to out of memory error, and we found out that it was due to uh, unbounded validation compaction, uh, which the details is there in Cassandra one four three three two ticket, and it was. It is kind of regression issue, and in I mean, it's it's rare, but it can happen. So um, so even though uh, the recommendation is to go to the latest patch release, but testing becomes extremely uh, important. So um, now, so that was uh, my the last uh, homework. Now let's talk about the activities to avoid in a mixed version cluster during your upgrade. So, so, so any uh, activity which involves streaming, either a repair or decommissioning or, or a bootstrapping, a replacing, we should avoid that. Also, we should avoid any DDL or DCL uh, operation, for example, creating new table or uh, dropping it or, or granting or revoking permission to a user. 
uh, we should not enable CDC in the mixed version cluster, and uh, we should avoid enabling a new feature uh, in a mixed version cluster. So once you have upgraded the entire cluster, then you can enable the new feature of of the uh, new 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 Cassandra version. Uh, okay. So now uh, let's uh, talk about uh, the pre-upgrade steps. So the first thing is that. Uh, make sure that the each node in the cluster are in healthy state. So when I say healthy, uh, it means that at least uh, their disk usage, heap usage, and CPU usage are at uh, satisfactory level. And uh, also check the, the cluster is repaired. Now disable any scheduled repair and uh, make sure that the node team is performing any prohibited uh, task, uh, which I discussed in the previous uh, slide. Um, uh, and if you have done any intermediate upgrade, then make sure that the last upgrade SSH table uh, has completed successfully. And then only you start the, uh, the next upgrade. And uh, the last point uh, is that uh, take a backup of your data, including the configuration. And this is uh, very important in case anything goes wrong. Now, here is the standard process uh, uh, for upgrading uh, the Cassandra binary on a node. So the first thing is you uh, do is you run node tool drain, uh, you shut down uh, Cassandra, and then you uh, upgrade uh, Java version uh, if only required. Uh, for example, if you are upgrading to Cassandra 2.2 or higher, you will require Java 8. Um, and then you install a new Cassandra package. Um, and you co configure your system uh, with your custom configuration, start Cassandra, and then validate that everything uh, is uh, fine or not. So, so this was at at the uh, at the node level. Now let's talk about uh, 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 let's talk at at cluster level. So, so at cluster level, uh, there are two types of strategy uh, followed mostly. Uh, the first and the standard uh, process is th that doing rolling upgrade means one node at a time uh, sequentially. Uh, the problem with this approach is that uh, here uh, time of uh, to uh, do this binary upgrade is directly proportional to the size of the cluster. So that means the bigger the cluster, uh, more is the upgrade uh, time. Now the uh, the second approach is that a uh, parallel upgrade. So it is specific to a multi-rack uh, cluster where uh, the number of racks is uh, greater than or equal to replication factor. Um, here, uh, all the nodes in a rack is upgraded in parallel and we upgrade one rack at a time. So no matter how uh, big your cluster is, um, uh, it, it, so you will be able to do this binary upgrade in a fixed amount of time. And the best part is that your application will remain always available even during uh, the upgrade. Uh, however, uh, this, uh, um, uh, I mean, having a multi rack cluster has its uh, uh, own issue. Uh, like, for example, uh, you need to scale up or scale down uh, with a factor of its uh, replication uh, factor. Now, one more strategy which uh, can be used uh, here is uh, in the multi-rack cluster is that uh, you update uh, the uh, the first node and validate, and if uh, and if everything goes fine, then you start your par parallel upgrade uh, 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 one rack at a time. Else, you simply uh, if if something goes wrong uh, while upgrading to that node, you simply uh, replace that. And that replace should be in place uh, uh, replace. Now, once your uh, binary upgrade is done, uh, it is time to upgrade uh, uh, the SS tables. So one more frequently asked question is that, can we run upgrade SS table uh, on multiple nodes in parallel? And the answer is that uh, you can run um, on all the nodes in parallel if if that does not impact the SLA of your application. Uh, because upgrade assist table puts load on the node and it may impact the API uh, response time. 
so um, uh, so for safer side and uh, uh, for minimal uh, impact same strategy as the binary upgrade uh, can be used that is a rolling upgrade or a parallel upgrade in case of uh, uh, multiple racks now <clears throat> Now you may uh, want to invoke this upgrade accessible probably through some script uh, and put some logic uh, uh, that like it should be uh, re it should uh, it can get rescheduled uh, you know again in case uh, the system restart before uh, the completion or a script should be able to tell uh, that the upgrade accessible has been completed successfully or not. Uh, you can also tune uh, some of the parameter like uh, compaction throughput MB per second, concurrent compactors, and uh, this jobs parameter of uh, jobs parameter uh, uh, to either speed up or slow down the upgrade assistable process based on uh, uh, your uh, available system uh, resource. Uh, now, once this, uh, uh, once the assistable has been upgraded. Uh, uh, on the entire cluster, that means your uh, your Cassandra upgrade is done here. Although, uh, I mean, um, you may need to perform some of the minor steps uh, depending on what version uh, you are up. So, uh, for example, <clears throat> you will need to drop legacy tables like uh, users, uh, permissions, and credentials from system or key spaces. Uh, and if you um, if, if you are upgrading to 3.x and you unnecessarily don't want to keep too old uh, repair history data, then you can uh, uh, set uh, uh, the TTL uh, to one month and compaction strategy to TWCS for for repair history and pay, parent repair history table. And uh, uh, in in Cassandra 4.2 uh, 4.0, it has already been taken care of uh, uh, with this ticket, Cassandra. Um, one two seven oh one and now if you uh, if you remember uh, we disabled our uh, our scheduled repair so now this is the time uh, to uh, reschedule it and um, one uh, tip which i uh, would like to uh, give here that uh, um, Keep an eye on Jira tickets. So uh, you subscribe to the uh, Jira tickets uh, probably weekly uh, for uh, notification. That in case uh, any uh, ticket is opened, uh, critical or severe, then uh, you remain, uh, uh, you know, updated uh, for the same. Now, okay. So I have talked enough about upgrade. Now let's let's talk about uh, rollback. Now, well. Uh, it is uh, it is complex. So uh, remember, I mean, Cassandra uh, gives upgrade SS table uh, utility to upgrade our SS table, but there is no downgrade SS table utility in Cassandra. So you may lose some data. Uh, I mean, depending on what stage of upgrade uh, you are planning to roll back. I mean, uh, uh, for example, is this a minor version upgrade or a major version upgrade? Uh, whether you have upgraded to uh, one node or uh, just just one data center. I mean, whether you upgraded uh, uh, the binary on few nodes or all the nodes, or how much time you uh, 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 you have uh, has already been passed, or whether you have uh, ran a uh, node tool upgrade is stable or not. So now uh, most uh, minor version uh, uh, minor version Cassandra uh, supports rollback. I mean, except for those where the internode protocol has changed or the SS table uh, format uh, has changed. And I mean, these uh, things are rare in minor version. Uh, however, the major version uh, does not support rollback and there is a risk of uh, data loss uh, or outages. So now, to, so, but you can reduce the risk of uh, data loss during a rollback. So the way you can, uh, I mean, we can do is like upgrade the first node and then validate. And if anything goes wrong, replace that node. So when I say replace, it is, uh, I mean, the, it is in place replace. I mean, just wipe out, wipe, wipe off the data and and replace. Uh, now, if you have a uh, active passive uh, uh, configuration, then start with your uh, passive data center first. And if if anything goes wrong, you have 
an option to uh, rebuild uh, your uh, data center. Uh, you can also upgrade one replica uh, at if uh, that replica um, the, if something goes wrong, you can uh, replace uh, that replica. And and uh, upgrading one replica at a time is only feasible if you either have a single token or uh, if you are using uh, uh, VNode, then you you should have a rat awareness. Now, once you have upgraded more than one replica, then uh, the rollbacks becomes very tricky. So so in short, like I mean, try to avoid uh, rollback as much as you can. Um, uh, but I I believe that uh, if we fall uh, if we have done our homework. Uh, items which uh, I have explained uh, previously, I don't see any reason uh, we have to roll back. Now, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I have given too much information. So now let's uh, try to summarize it. And, and I believe <clears throat> at least we should remember four things before upgrading our cluster. The first thing is to, to uh, don't forget to check the driver compatibility. Uh, reading news.txt, reading ins instruction, testing is very important part, uh, important, and uh, take your uh, backup. So these four things uh, we should uh, remember, uh, and yeah, so that that's that's all from my end. Thank you, and if you have any question, you can ping in the chat box. Let me go to the chat box. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for joining the talk.